All right, so we're in jump and we're going to run a t test. So the first thing we need to do is get our data into jump. There's lots of ways to do this, but my favorite way is to copy it from Excel and say edit paste with column names. So now we have um, one column with the data for location. Are the ants in a forest or in the field? And one column for uh, the actual number of ant nests. And you can see it's the same data set, it's just reorganized. So we have the six forest data points here and the four field data points here. And the first thing we wanna do is test for the assumptions um, of normality and equality of variance before we can run a parametric t-test. So I'm going to select and hide and exclude the field data points so that I can just focus on these forest data points. And the first thing I'll do is test um, for the assumption of normality. So we have to run two Shapiro-Wilkes tests because we're, we want to make sure that both the field data and the forest data were collected from normally distributed populations. So if I say analyze distribution, and then I just put my continuous variable in for y. I'm analyzing the distribution of y, or the distribution of the number of ant nests. And here you can see the data um, showing the, the, the frequency of the different values. And if I go down to the bottom here, or sorry, if I use this little drop down box, I can go to continuous fit. And I can fit all these different types of distributions, but I want to fit a normal distribution. And now you can see it's graphed the normal distribution along my data. It looks like it matches okay. I go down to the fitted normal box, and there's another little red drop down arrow and I ask for a goodness of fit test. So it tests the goodness of fit for these data um, against a distribution. And so this fitted normal shows me a Shapiro-Wilkes W value of 0.955 and a p-value of 0.78, which is great. So it means that um, I don't reject the null. The null in this case is that the data were collected from a normally distributed population so I don't reject that null hypothesis and the forest samples are good to go. So then I'm going to unhide the field samples and hide the forest samples and say analyze distribution again of the ant nests. And this time I get a slightly different, looks more skewed uh, distribution, but let's just plot continuous fit normal distribution and go down to the bottom and ask for a goodness of fit test. So once again, my, my W value here, 0.849 is a little lower. My P value is a little lower also, 0.22, but I would still not reject the null hypothesis. I would accept the null hypothesis that these data were collected from a normally distributed population. So that's good. So I've passed that first assumption that both of my samples were collected from normally distributed populations. Then the next assumption of a t-test is that the data are equally variable. And so to do that, I go to analyze fit y by x, and I put my categorical variable location on the x-axis and the number of ant nests on the y. Now we see that it's, it's graphed um, our data. Oops, where did it go? Here we go. And they, they look roughly equally variable. Let's just see. So we go up here and we go down to unequal variances test. And that gives us all of these tests here. I have talked to you about the Levine's test, which gives us an F ratio of 0.42 and a p-value of 0.5325. So once again, our p-value is greater than 0.05. We would not reject the null hypothesis. In, the, in this case, the null hypothesis is that the data are equally variable. And so it's good. We don't want to reject this null hypothesis. And so we have now met both of the assumptions of, um, <clears throat> of a t-test. So to run the t-test, we would go up to analyze. Same thing, fit y by x. It's going to look very similar to the Levine's test. I put location as my x factor, number of ant nests as y. And this time, <clears throat> I'm going to say uh, means ANOVA pooled T. So if I run it this way, then I get a T value 
of um, it shows it shows the data again. It doesn't make a very nice graph here, so I'd want to make a different kind of a bar graph with error bars. But it shows me the t distribution down here, which is lovely, and it shows me with this little red line where my value of t would be, um, and <clears throat> it gives you a t value, and it gives you degrees of freedom. It's eight, and the probability that your value is greater than or equal to the absolute value of t, that's your p-value, 0 0.0181, okay? And it also gives you an ANOVA table and some other stuff, but we're just gonna focus on this pooled t-test right now. So uh, that's how you'd run a t-test. And in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis that the means are equal. We would say there's a sig there are significantly more ant nests in the field um, than in forests. And we would say that our statistics, a T of, with eight degrees of freedom is negative 2.96, and our p-value is 0 0.0181. All right, so that's how it works.